don't go, I need you so I'm begging seal to play. All right, we are preparing for our camping trip. It has been so long, I've been so ready. It's got a sunny day. What do you do when you prepare for camping? You go get food. Got some camp foods, you know, I'm not gonna eat a real meal out there, just some, you know, some snacks, some low sugar snacks, that kind of stuff. And of course, milk for the kid. All right, I got my food, I got my milk for the baby, and oh, there was a lady in there. She bought, she bought like normal food. She had six gallons of milk. Six gallons of milk. I'm like, you have more kids than I do. <laughs> hey, ham radio enthusiast. It is Tom in 9YO here, and I am doing a camping video. All right, so it finally got clear, clear skies, no clouds so far, um, no rain, and it's not that cold. It's going to be down in the 20s, 25, 30 ish tonight, and it's probably like 50 right now, so I'm actually a little hot wearing all this stuff wearing fleece lined pants and they're actually kind of hot but later on I will I will be glad that I did it um so I'm going back to that same park that I was at before I have way way too much gear back there I just kept putting stuff in there thinking well maybe I'll use it maybe I'll use it it's better than getting out there and not not having it right and nothing worse than having set up camp and you forget something like a battery or something like that for your radio anyway I've got the skylight on driving my wife's van Look at that, not a cloud. I have been reading a little bit about weather, and I want to talk to you about that a little bit later because weather patterns are very interesting, and I think we all can learn how to read the weather, and as ham radio operators, we kind of need to. I might even get into the Skywarn uh, ham radio reporting of tornadoes and stuff like that. I found that online that there is a frequency that Skywarn people get on and they can kind of report. Um, all right, so let's go camping. I've got about a 40 minute drive and let's set it up. Okay, so I just arrived here and there's a gun range here so if you hear lots of shooting that's what that is anyway let's take a look around and get all this gear out and try to find a little protection from the wind in this area i'm not that protected from the wind but i also need a good tree to throw into let's take a look i'm thinking that tree right there i've used it before i think that'd be a good antenna tree Okay, I parked my van here because the wind is going that way and it gives me a space of no wind right here. And the camera right now is not protected from the wind, but I do have a, a dead cat on it. Um, the shooting is obnoxious. Uh, it's getting annoying, but I guess that's the price of freedom to be, come, to be able to come out here and just set up anytime you want without even having to pay a fee. I'm gonna take a look around and see what we can find. Kind of look at the sky and kind of try and see what we can find with the weather too. I not think so, but having a camp table is really, really convenient. All right, camp is half set up. I have that Grundig radio right there. That's because I don't have my two meter handheld. Got my heater there instead of a fire. Food and accessories, cameras, and let's look inside the tent. This tent is hard to set up because it has so much it has so many stakes you have to worry about, but it's got a lot of room. So I've got this big cushion here because without it, I can't sleep on a hard ground very well. I just have a bad back, so I just can't do that. Anyway, this is where I'm spending the night. Now I've got to get an antenna up there and bring it down here. So what happened was, I don't know why I shot it too high and it went back down and it got kind of caught. Don't shoot it too high. It was, it was, I needed to, 
I don't need to shoot it that high. So it got caught and I couldn't get it down. So what I did was I wrapped it around my waist like this and I just started walking as hard as I could. It's the only way I could get it down because it was stuck up there. All of a sudden I had this pop and now it comes down and we're good to go. So I am way up high. I don't need to be that high, but I am. Now let's get that antenna on. So I have the antenna to the top of my tent, and now I'm going to go out there and pull on the other side and bring the whole thing up. Tell me that's not cool. I've got my coax going up to the top of my tent, high end fed, bungee cord. And this goes on up there, and maybe you can see it. I zoom in. Now I can start to relax a little bit. The hard part's over. Wow, it's a lot of setup. Okay, so what's going on is I'm just taking a little walk, checking things out. Okay, so what I have on this camera, sorry about the wind, I, there's not much I can do about it. I have a polarizing filter on this lens and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two shots, one with it and one without it, but right now it's on it. So it will darken everything a little bit, but you can, should be able to see under the water, kind of. You know, you do a little research on cameras and you realize that, or cameras and images and everything, you realize that there's glare. Tons and tons of glare on everything. Even leaves, foliage, water, windows, it's everywhere. And if you take it off, you can see a lot more. So, let's see what we can see with the water down here. Right now I have no way I'm walking in mud. Ugh. So this is with the filter on. And let's take it off. I can't really, it's so sunny out here, I can't even look at my, my monitor. So I'm just gonna hope it's good. It's time for dinner. <laughs> Let's hope I packed it all. I'm really gr the ground is really wet. If if you don't put your knees on something, you have wet knees, and I do not want wet knees all night. All right. So what have I got? I have no idea if this is going to work or not or good. I'm so glad I found this spoon because it's going to be hot in there. So what you do is it says two cups of boiling water. Stir. Close, stir again. Let's sit for eight or nine minutes. All right, jet boil. I got this 10 years ago, at least 10 years ago. And it works really well. I just hope I have fuel. All right, so it's pretty simple. Jet boil. I don't like that it, that it uses, you have to use this fuel, but I also like that it uses this fuel because it's so simple. So you screw it on. So I think that worked. All right. So what you get. I forgot what this does. Oh yeah. 
This gives it more support. I haven't used this in so long. What the heck? Something like that. That's not working. Wait a minute. Yeah. You want that because you don't want it to tip over, right? I forgot what that's for. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put my water... I'm going to go ahead and light it. So what you do is you turn the gas on and then you punch the button. I can't believe I remember that. It's been so long. I think I was at Hamvention last year. There. It's working. Alright. Well, we have heat. Now we need to boil the water. What I like about this is it's so fast and simple. Hence the word jet boil. Let's see, how long will it take? Probably about two or three minutes. It's already kind of slightly bubbling. I'm gonna open this up. Check that out. Actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? Can you see? Water's really kind of swirling. Don't want to eat that. I forgot to bring a trash bag. You end up with all this trash when you're camping, right? I forgot to bring it. It's actually a really nice day. I'm actually pretty darn warm, but when that sun goes down, it's gonna get really cold. And I'll probably have to dive in there and bring my uh, propane heater in there, but looks like it's about to boil. It's almost ready. But all you have to do is pour it in here. You don't pour it in there, because then you have a mess. That's why these are expensive, but they're convenient, you know? Because you, it's such a pain to clean these out when you're camping. It gets all mucky and gross, and then you take it off and you pour it out, and you got this mess. See, how do you clean it when you're outside, right? I'm gonna turn it up all the way. Oh, I don't know, it's probably been two minutes. I called CQ a little bit. No one came back, but I'm on 20 meters and it's probably dead now. All right, it's been about 12 minutes. I let it sit too long, that's all right. A little soupy. That means I put too much water, but I don't care. I don't know, looks good to me. Might be freeze dried, but it <laughs> looks better than my cooking. What do you think? Still a little hot. Might pour out some of the juice. Or might drink it. Why not? Whoa! Man, I'm so glad I have a long spoon with this. So I just have two really good QSOs, but I uh, managed not to turn my microphone on, so I got the giant bioenol battery I wanted to last all night. I wanted to pump out 85 watts. Over here we got the Coleman lantern. This thing burns both lantern fuel and regular gas. So got a little extra light here. My trail's camping. My trail's tent. The reason I got this tent was because my other ones were so hot. I wanted some airflow underneath. Saw a good review online. I want some airflow up there. So, you know, sometimes it gets really hot in the summer and it's really hard to camp in the heat. So I just got this book, Reading the Clouds. It's actually really, really good. It's a thin book, it's a thin read. But the goal, what I really want to do is learn how to read the weather better. 
I want to do some storm chasing. I want to take some. I want to take some photography of storms and lightning and stuff like that. But I mean, I really want to know more. And I would tell you this book is freaking awesome. I just started reading the first couple of chapters and immediately started learning about mostly about cold fronts and warm fronts. The most important things you need to know when you're looking at weather. It even tells you how you can almost forecast the weather if you get good at it by just observation. And it talks immediately about the clouds that are really high, the cirrus clouds, and the ones that are there's medium. There's three layers really: the high layer, the middle, the medium layer, and the smaller layer. And they all have their the, the amount of feet. I don't have it memorized, but you can pretty much tell. You can kind of tell what layer are the clouds and. Like this, the really high cirrus clouds, for example, it talks about how it can predict a lot about what might happen and which way the upper winds are going or the jet streams. So the jet streams, of course, are, are up high and they change all, this, all of a sudden. And the lower winds also, they work together to create our weather. So you can almost predict whether the weather's gonna get worse or better, according to this book, based on if your observations of the clouds at high levels and low levels, ground level and high level. So the cirrus clouds are the ones that are wispy and they're really, really high. And right off the bat, it tells you how you can kind of foretell whether or not a warm front is coming. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but a warm front looks kind of like this. So it kind of comes in like at an angle. And so you'll start seeing, so if you're down here on the bottom, if you're down here and a warm front is coming, you'll start seeing wispy clouds really way up high maybe as much as a day, a day before, 24 hours or more, 15 hours, something like that. And then as it, as it comes, you'll see more and more clouds and it starts with the cirrus clouds. And that's one of the first things I'm looking for on this very sunny day is some kind of change, some kind of thing in, on the horizon. But right now we're in a high pressure area and that's why I'm able to go camping because high pressure means stability, low pressure means instability. The way I think of it is low pressure sucks all the bad stuff in high pressure pushes everything out it's kind of like a top down sort of thing the high pressure so right now we're in a high pressure system there's hardly a cloud in the sky any anytime a cloud does appear it will almost disappear a, late, a little bit later so i'm looking for any kind of pattern but right now there's no pattern at all it's just sunny a cloud will appear and go away another interesting thing it said that the contrails from these jets i'm looking at one right now can tell you a lot. The more contrails you see, the more likely a front is coming in. And it, I think it especially talked about a warm front because it has to do with the way uh, the moisture changes in the air and the air as the jet goes, it, it, it crystallizes. CQ CQ November 9 Yankee Oscar calling CQ CQ N9YO calling CQ CQ from Missouri CQ CQ November 9 Yankee Oscar calling CQ CQ from Missouri CQ CQ November 9 Yankee Oscar calling CQ CQ N9YO calling CQ CQ from Missouri By the way, if I didn't mention it, that high-end fed, I'm not using an antenna tuner. That high-end fed antenna is doing a great job of having a super low SWR on 20 meters. I haven't tried it on anything else yet. I'm on 20 meters and it's working great. Super low SWR, no antenna tuner. I'm very happy with it so far. Later I'll be going to 40 meters, but right now, CQ CQ November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ CQ, N9YO calling CQ CQ CQ. Whiskey 3 Echo Papa contest. Whiskey 3 Echo Papa contest. November 9, Yankee Oscar. Whiskey 3 Echo 
Papa Whiskey Three Echo Papa contest. November nine, Yankee Oscar. Guys, I gotta tell you, this is really cool. At some point, you have to get away and just focus on ham radio and just do it. You know what I mean? Get away from everything. Otherwise, it's just kind of like you got kids and you got this and that. But this is a good chance for me to just say, I have this period of time to do this. And it's freaking fun. I'm not making a lot of contacts, but I sure am trying. So some bad, kind of bad news. Man, I keep getting hot and cold. Sun's going down. Uh, some kind of bad news that high end fed worked great on 30, 20 meters. I dropped down to 40 and it's about like 1.9 to one. So I brought out my antenna tuner and it was real easy to tune. That's good news, but I had to bring out the antenna tuner. So a little disappointed that the 40 meters didn't tune up that well. So just so you know, high end fed, it tunes super well on 20 meters, not so good. Maybe two to one, a little bit better than two to one on 40 meters. But let's try to make a contact. It's a little, you know, it's, a, it's about the same size as a KX2, a little bitty tiny, a uh, little bitty tiny amp. Uh, they, you know, it supposedly claims 40 watts or 45 watts or something. Mine won't do that. It's, uh, it struggles to see 30. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, but anyway, it's... It, He's you know, using a KX2 a little with a little, little Chinese amp, 40 watts. Shack, so. Well, very good, and I uh, appreciate the park, and I uh, got you logged in, and um, uh, we'll turn it back to uh, SQF and give his frequency back if he's uh, back. Uh, thanks a lot, over. November 9, Yankee Oscar. KG-48. Whiskey 8, Drift Farm Elf. Roger, Roger. Uh, thank you, guys. I do appreciate it. I am now back in the saddle. So, um, I believe that one station that was coming through was uh, Kilo Trump. Into that queue, so hi, hi. <laughs> You're a five three here in the Tampa, Florida. How's it uh, sounding over there? Lots of activity tonight. Roger, Roger. Uh, yeah, it sounded like you said you were running QRP with an Elcraft uh, KX2. Um, so, if you're not using an amplifier, I believe that radio is capable of 10 watts, is that correct? 10 watts, baby. Echo Zulu Hotel, Louisiana, QSO party. Kill on November 4, Papa Oscar Radio. The Papa Oscar Radio, give me the uh, prefix 44, Papa Oscar Radio. You're 59 Calhoun. Yeah, copy, copy, is 59. You're 59 back here in Victor Alpha, Virginia, 73. Thank you for Virginia. Charlie Romeo Juliet. The Charlie Romeo Juliet. I missed the suffix. Roger. Kilo Charlie Romeo Juliet. Okay, copy that. You're a 5'9 Catahoula. Hey, Roger. Thank you for Catahoula. You're a 5'9 in North Carolina. Charlie Romeo Juliet. Thank you for North Carolina. 73 uh, QRZ, Louisiana QSO party. Kilo Mexico 4, United Germany X-ray. Kilo Mexico 4, United Germany X-ray, you're 5-9 Calhoun. Copy that, you're 5-9, 5-9, drop the 30 Thank you. Thank you for Tennessee in 73. Your Z, Louisiana QSO party in 5-T-Z-8.
November 9, Yankee, Oscar. So, Whiskey 4, uh, give me your call. Whiskey 4, Tango, India, X-Ray. Whiskey 4, Tango, India, X-Ray. 5-9, Catahoula. Roger, Roger, 5-9, South Florida. South Florida, thanks for Florida. 73. Bravo 3, United Frank Bravo. United Frank Bravo, your 5-9, Catahoula. Kilo Bravo 3, United Frank Bravo. We don't care, Rick, here, uh, Friday night, I'm getting here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Little Town Club, Bravo, Aqua, Tango Hotel. QSL, thank you for PA and 73. November 9, Yankee Oscar. Hey, Whiskey Oscar. November 9, Yankee Oscar. This is November 9, Yankee Oscar, okay? You're a 5'9", Catalina Parish. You are 5'9", Missouri, Eastern Missouri. Thank you for Missouri, 73. This is Kilo 1, Papa Whiskey, Foxtrot. Kilo 1, Papa Whiskey, Foxtrot. You're 5'9", Calhoun. So that was an easy one. So, you know, I was talking about clouds earlier and the Cirrus clouds. It's kind of funny, that's west. That means that's east. The Cirrus clouds are moving south. That's odd. Let me show you. So the, the very high clouds, the high clouds, the cirrus clouds that are jet stream clouds are moving south. We don't have any lower level clouds. I was talking about there's three layers, middle, the small, three layers. There's the, the lower layer, then the middle layer, and then the high layer. Let's take a look at these high layer clouds. <clears throat> Those right there are moving south. And that kind of tells you, the moon's over there, that kind of tells you where the jet stream is going south. And there's no wind here at all. So we are in a very good position at the moment. But what does that mean? All I know is that the jet stream is going south. And the moon is right there. So, what's the deal? Normally, digital is not 7055 around that area. It's not that. It's not that. But digital, these digital people are all over the 7055, 704. They're just taking over the band here. 7048. Do you know what? I'm just going to go to 7055 and just see. 7055 is supposed to be straight key, but it's digital, so. Man, it's crazy. There's digital people scattered all over 40 meters. Way too low but where they belong. I'm at 7045 and up, all of it digital. There's some contest or something going on, but that's 7045. There was a cardinal back there. There's another one, there's a female back there and a male just flew away.
There's just too much noise, man. There's so much QRM. I can't, I can't, I just, I just barely got that guy. That was Charlie in Virginia. Charlie in Virginia, see that other guy? It's just stomping. It's, I said 7-3. That's the best I can do. There's the cirrus clouds I'm talking about. There's nothing low, only everything that's very high. It looks like it's moving from north to south, which is not what I would expect. I would expect it to move east to west. Now over here we have some lower level clouds forming. We went from a super clear day to, what are these, stratus clouds? Some stratus clouds, these are way lower you can tell they're a lot lower to the ground and these are a lot higher and those what that wispiness stuff is are ice crystals sometimes you can even see snow that high up in the 30 to 40,000 feet range anyway I'm sitting here watching these clouds and what I'm thinking is there might be a front coming from the north which is unusual and over there down lower are some sear um, more stratus clouds lower to the ground see there kind of in that area anyway sun is setting around here watching the clouds is really interesting I I know where the jet stream is going right here and now in Missouri is heading from west west is that way where the sun is setting back so that's kind of southish and here we are now back to ham radio I always thought the key to making a really good fire if you did it right you should just be able to light it once and it just catches right that's the key to skill let's see if it works 
you light it one time, you did it just right, everything builds, and you have a fire. Let's see. I didn't plan on having a fire tonight, but I found all this wood out there. Why not have a small fire? So, there's a funny, funny Indian proverb that says, white man builds big fire, stays warm by collecting wood. Indian makes small fire, stays warm by staying by fire. Check that out. One light, and I did it. It's pretty damp out too.
cold. That was awesome! That was so cool. I got somebody else.
Got it, got it, got it. I got two in a row, man. Two in a row, two in a row. And that was pretty hard. It's so freaking dark, I can't see what I'm doing. And I'm not logging everything. I'm gonna turn this off and not answer any more QSOs because I need to log these things first. All right, what did I get? KM4ZZ, Virginia, K4, N5YBK, Jamie. Let's let's put them in the log. Okay, we are in full-blown darkness now. There's a good moon out, half moon. Half moon, not light, so it's got lots of light. I'm not trying to rush anything. I'm not trying to, you know, hit lots and lots of contacts. I'm just having fun, relaxing. All that wood I found on the ground. Just trying to save the energy that I have in my heater. I have those propane tanks, you know? So I'm just trying to save a little energy, stay warm. It's probably about 40 degrees. Not bad though, because I'm dressed up. No bugs whatsoever. I'd rather have cold and bugs than comfortable and being bitten. So there's the moon. I don't know if you can see it or not. My other camera, my good camera. Oh my God, I forgot to bring my good SD card. I ran, so I, I forgot to bring my 128 gigabyte SD card and I ran through my 64 gigabyte and now I'm out of it so this is the camera that I have to deal with this little thing but I've got my lantern I'm gonna do a little radio it's getting chilly though I'm gonna sit by that fire and do a little radio and then go in in the tent for the night someone just showed up there's some people over there there's a family over there these people just showed up but that's all right almost feel better when there's people here than when there's nobody. CQ, November 9, Nikki Oscar calling CQ, CQ. N9YO calling CQ, CQ. November 9, Nikki Oscar calling CQ, CQ. N9YO calling CQ, CQ. November 9, Nikki Oscar calling CQ, CQ, CQ. N9YO calling CQ. So, it's come that time again late night I have half of it on which is plenty warm if I did not have this heater I would have to get into my sleeping bag but it's way way warm in here with this thing
That's freaking awesome! Ron, check me out, man. Look at this. I'm sitting here talking to you this way and that way. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm having a ball. I think it's raining. I swear I hear sprinkles. Let's try single sideband, baby. Come on, let's do it. It uses uh, 20, 30, and 40. That's it. So 20 meters, I, I did really well earlier. I did not need a tuner on 20 meters. But I did on 40 because it just didn't tune up that well. But it tunes very easily on 40 meters. All I have to do is just twist it a little bit and it tunes up really well. So it sounds like I think we're getting out pretty, I'm getting out pretty well. However, there's tons and tons of activity tonight on 40 meters. So I think the bands are really good, is what I think. K4SFC, K4SFC, this is November 9, Yankee Oscar calling K4SFC. No problem, no problem. I am so uncomfortable in this tent. My, I, I am way too old to be sleeping in a tent. Uh, anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun at Hamvention. Can't wait to see you there. We're gonna, I think we're gonna do that bar thing on Saturday night. And anyway, if you can't hear me anymore, seven three seven three. Awesome, seven three. So, uh, check Twitter. I'll probably if I'm if I feel like it in the morning, which I probably won't. But if I do feel like it, I'm gonna make some coffee, and maybe we we try again in the morning. Probably about eight eight or eight to nine Central Time. Anyway, this is really fun. One of the most exciting contacts I've ever made because it's been so difficult. Uh, I think I like this high end fit. So anyway, seven three seven three. We'll see you not too far away. Good night, dot dot. <laughs> There's the coyotes. Come closer, coyotes. I got something for you. I got a package for you. It's right here. Five nine nine zero nine. Yes, very good. Yep, excellent signal into Rhode Island, Romeo, India. You have five nine plus twenty. Okay, am I your first contact in the contest? Yes, uh, yes, you are. Okay, so zero zero one. Next one will be zero zero two, etc. Thank you so much. Seventy three. Norway Ocean six Tango. Seventy three. November zero, I think it's Yankee Mike Alpha five nine nine one zero. Thank you, November Ocean Six Tango. Contest Norway Oscar Six Tango. November Ocean Six Tango. Contest. November nine Yankee Oscar. Norway nine Yankee Oscar five nine nine eleven. You are 599 Missouri, number 1-1. One, one. Was that 001 or 011? 001. 001. 73, November Oscar 6 Tango. <laughs> that, was, that was dumb of me. I should have said 001. Ocean, I said 11-11 one, one, like 11. Norway Ocean 6 Tango contest. Where was that? Kilo Bravo 4, Romeo Golf Kilo. Kilo Bravo 2, Romeo Golf Kilo, 
Okay, I managed to go through in my entire 64 gigabyte card and my battery on my other camera. This camera is dead, so now I'm resorted, resorting to use my phone. It is 6.32 in the morning, and I'm going to turn the radio on and see what's happening. It was a really cold night. Not that bad, but once you're in the bag, you're all right. This ground is still, even with this mat, it's just too hard. Man. Anyway, I had a pretty good night, actually. I feel pretty good. That heater makes a, the world of difference. Man, I find digital to be kind of annoying. Let's see if we can make a contact. Too much QRM. That was a good contact, but there was just, he faded out so fast and there was just so much uh, QRM that I had to give it up. He's still contacting me. I couldn't believe that though, so quickly I got made a contact. <clears throat> That's a good idea. Um, I've never messed with six meters. I never messed with six meters. Is that what it is? Um, every time I went there, it was just staticky. But maybe if you wait for a contest, you can hear people on six meters. This is what you hear at six thirty in the morning. Where is he? When Tasmania? I, I heard someone say Tasmania. Australia? Are you kidding me?
Robert, see you later. Great signal here, and um, you have a good evening on uh, in, by the Bay of Fire. Victor Kilo 7, Victor Zulu, WB2 REM. Yeah. Bay of Fire? See you later. Wow. Bay of Fire. Anybody else before we go to QRT, WB2 REM? Yeah. Everybody have a good shot. Uh, AK4, GLG. Okay. GLG. Uh, uh, go ahead, Hector. Well, as I mentioned, I'm down to my phone now because that's all I have. Um, I'm all packed up. My tent was really wet on the outside, so I just had to roll it up. I can't pack it yet because it'll get all moldy and stuff. Sun's come up. It's about 7.30, and I'm going to head back because I couldn't sleep if I wanted to. These guys are already shooting guns. Uh, not the best place to camp, but, it, you know, it's where I come. I had a great night, though. Lots of contacts. The antenna did really well on 20 meters, it didn't need an antenna tuner, and on 40 it did need one, but it tuned really easily. I was able to just do do it tune. There's a cardinal. Alright guys, thank you for joining me. All the stuff you see in this video, all the stuff I bought on Amazon, I paid 100% for it. It will be in the links in the description of this video if you're interested in like the fold-up table. Lots of people ask me about that fold-up table and other things so everything will be in the links in the description of this video all right thanks for joining me and i'm gonna go eat because i'm freaking hungry or maybe coffee i don't know